Yo, what is up guys? Joker here bringing you another video. This time it's going to be going over Diablo 4 season 5. I know, boo, D4, bad, blah, 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 right? But I wanted to go ahead and make a video going over it because in my opinion, D4 is in the best place that it has been. I think it's actually good enough to recommend and that's the main point of this video. Now, don't get me wrong. Is it perfect? No, but counterpoint, there's no perfect ARPG on the market anyways. So when I say good enough to recommend, it's in the mindset of Diablo 4, right? It's not in the mindset of, is this better than PoE? Is this better than Last Epoch? It's, this is recommendable for people that like Diablo and Diablo games, right? So let's go over a couple of things about the season and quality of life. The season itself, I really enjoy. The season mechanic is a lot like Ultimatum, right? It puts you in an arena and it spawns waves of enemies. And then you choose a modifier at the end of every wave that has a pro and a con. It'll be like, they do more damage, but you get more Aether, which is the currency you use to buy rewards at the end of it. So it's that type of thing. Some of my favorite types of ARPG mechanics, sadly, are the circle mechanics, right? Like Ultimatum, Legion, Ritual, where it's just you stand here and you kill a bunch of shit, right? In my opinion, that's the best ARPG mechanics is ones where you just kill a bunch of shit because that's what drew me to ARPGs in the first place. But off topic. So in this season, we did go ahead and get more quality of life in the form of this little guy right here. Uh, he is a loot pet. He essentially does the exact same thing as the loot pet in D3. He picks up all the gumball currency for me and he is free. Once you log in, you're going to see him in uh, Kiova Shed right away. So you can buy other little loot pets, but no means have to. You get a free loot pet and it's a huge quality of life. Some of the other quality of life features that have happened since probably a large majority of you have quit is they went ahead and they addressed the loot and gear situation where loot under your world tier no longer drops. What I mean by that is if you're in world tier four, you're only going to be dropping ancestral items. You're not going to be dropping sacred items and below because they're useless, right? Those items automatically turn into materials for you as well as they did go ahead and they streamlined the modifier pool to make it so modifiers are actually meaningful. So ground items that you find actually have a decent chance of being an upgrade for you, right? It's primarily going to be things like main stat, life, resistances, and then the additional modifiers like crit chance, crit damage, vulnerable damage, those type of modifiers. So they streamlined and condensed the modifier pool significantly for you. On top of the fact that legendary aspects were in a rather terrible state previously, right? Uh, how it worked previously is you found an item that had a good legendary aspect, you extracted the aspect, and you had like a one-time use for it. They realized that that was dog shit, and they changed that completely as well, where now you have a codex of power where legendary items that you disassemble are going to save your legendary aspects in the codex of power and it's always going to be the highest tier aspect so as you can see here this rank 16 out of 16 means that i can put this maxed aspect on an infinite amount of gear i don't have to worry about wasting an aspect wasting an aspect is no longer a thing Plus, overall, aspects drop much more commonly, right? So you're going to be able to find your legendary powers a lot more commonly. And you don't have to worry about not upgrading your gear because you don't have enough legendary aspects to sustain it. 
from what I've experienced in the last couple of seasons is with the bump to like gold and resources, you really shouldn't be running into any kind of issue with mats and gold. Uh, I haven't like, I, I don't know if I'm just not changing my gear as much as I should be or what, but it's felt like a natural uh, progression, really smooth. They did go ahead and they got rid of you having to collect the jewels as well. Now you pick up jewel shards and you can just craft them into the gems, right? So they went ahead and got rid of some of the main complaints with inventory management, the unnecessary gear, the legendary aspects, and the jewels. I've been playing for probably, I don't know, 15 plus hours and I only have like one tab used. Um, I mean, two if you take this into consideration, but I could put all of this stuff in my inventory. I really don't have to have a completely separate tab for it. And I really also don't need like 17 different types of potions, but what what are you going to do, right? So they went ahead and they fixed the inventory management a lot, right? They made it significantly better. Is it flawless? No, there's still some things that you're going to want to work. Like if we could still get a loot filter, that'd be pretty dope. Um, we'd be able to go ahead and filter out and look for specific items, right? As opposed to just like the good items that can drop. Let's say I want to look for items that specifically only have intelligence and vulnerable damage, right? That's something that still would be uh, helpful, but that's something still much more end game, right? That's more at the top end, which they're still working on that. It seems like the main focus has been like quality of life and the early progression because they reworked items, they reworked experience, they reworked affixes uh, to make everything like more streamlined in the leveling process. And they have added some end game things here and there where they've added mini bosses to help you farm out uniques oh uniques um they made uniques a lot more common as well because they are usually build defining right so you usually do want to have a unique or two in your build so they're just much more common overall be it if you're getting them from the season journey caches or something that they've added relatively recently is kind of a renowned system, right? This came up, I want to say in season two, I think is the first time we saw this really. I, I want to say it was, but it's essentially a renowned system where while you're killing mobs, you're going to be essentially gathering souls and you're going to get progressively better rewards, right? This is going to start off with, I think this is actually where I got my first unique item is one of these caches, but um, it's going to progressively be like a, almost a bounty system where you collect these souls and then it just gives you progressively better rewards. And then this is the first season I've seen this, but um, at tier 20, it's going to go ahead and give you a free ancestral uh, mythic unique item, right? This is going to be things like the grandfather sword, um, the helmet, whatever that's called. Uh, what is it called? The Harlequin's quest, a uh, crest or something like that. But those top of like end game T0 uniques is what I'm going to reference them as because most likely if you're watching this, you're a POE player. So that'd be like the easiest comparison for you to realize is T0 uniques. So that's really, really cool. They've added a, a lot of quality of life. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at the time uh, so I could see. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll run this real quick. Another quality of life that they added is Nightmare Dungeons and Infernal Hordes, like you teleport directly to them. But this is going to be the showcase of the League mechanic that I was mentioning as well, since I believe I covered all of the quality of life improvements that I wanted to go over. My memory is like not the best, like I have goldfish memory. But let's go ahead and showcase the build and showcase the um, 
showcase the build and everything, right? And, and the league mechanic. So essentially, I'm a chain lightning character. So what I want to do is shoot chain lightning and this little bolt's going to shoot around the arena and kill stuff for me. It's kind of like a pseudo auto bomber, right? But this is the league mechanic. It starts off with waves of enemies, like I was mentioning. And then these little events are going to pop up. These are what you want to prioritize because they're going to give you the bur burning aether. And the burning aether is going to be what you use for your league rewards. So um, like I was mentioning, it's, it's one of those good old circle mechanics where essentially a bunch of waves of enemies spawn. And I actually think they did relatively well with mob density in this right like at no point am i really waiting for anything to spawn it may be because i'm z dps or whatever um but I, I think they did a fairly good job with like mob density and everything where i'm always kind of killing and or running around the arena I'm only going to do this first wave real quick and then I'm going to cut and go to the second part of the event. But see, after you complete the wave, it gives you the modifiers where it tells you, hey, do you want one of these negative modifiers for one of these benefits, right? So that's where I was saying like the... Um, that's where I was saying the benefit, uh, the ultimatum feature comes in, right? Because it, it feels a lot like ultimatum where you select the negative modifier. Um, ultimatum, you don't get a benefit. You literally only get a negative, but it, it is what it is. Well, I guess you do get a benefit because you get an additional reward, right? This just gives you the potential of getting more rewards. So I'm going to go ahead and cut right here. And oh my god, not die. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here and then I'll show you the next like wave of this. Okay, so after you finish the six waves, you're thrown into a final little boss fight, which in my opinion, it seems more like a um like another chance of getting more aether than an actual boss fight, because these guys don't seem to be that strong. Um, they mainly just seem to be like, I, I guess, like a damage check or something, because uh, all, all you have to do is really just kill them. And once you kill all three of them, they give you a shit ton of aether. So it gives you like an extra three, four rolls of the final loot table. Right. So, I mean, uh, it might just be my build because I'm like constantly stunning them that that might be a thing like they're always bent over for me <laughs> giggity um but they <laughs> they uh yeah see two of them are already dead and the third one now this being said this is only the tier two of this it goes up to tier four i believe so i still would have like two higher tiers of this that i would have to deal with but uh, uh, I haven't found a problem. Like, there we go. We burst him, and he's going to explode into Aether for me. And we go, do we hit 200? I don't think we hit 200. Okay. But then we come over here, and we have to choose. Do we want materials, right? This is going to be like crafting materials, boss summoning materials, that type of stuff. Do we want gear, which is all going to be ancestral gear, like I was mentioning previously? Or do we want gold? I'm not going to click that um, just yet, at least, right? I'll, I'll do it after a little bit, but I need to upgrade my gear. So I need to do this a few times because like half my gear is still um half my gear is still uh sacred so i i do need to kind of get the better gear before i were focus on gold but then we'll use our last 32 points and then you can just see you get a decent amount of gold but that's pretty much the league mechanic that's what i wanted to show about d4 i'm happy that this video isn't infinitely long but yeah don't forget to like comment and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content uh next videos are probably going to be going back to d4 uh, uh d4 <laughs> uh back to path of exile depends like if anything else pops up because honestly uh poe league hasn't been holding my interest that well but yeah uh and, and i'm not like that averse enough to make guides on d4 i'd have to play a lot more than i have to really try to pump out guides for it but yeah until next time take care